Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we are creating conversion tables for length, weight, and capacity units using measurement tools. Uh, we'll be doing most of that in our class and then we'll do a little bit of the work with it at home. And then we're going to use tables to solve problems. So we did a lot of the work on the actual measurement stuff today in class, but now I'd like to look at how we can use those to solve math problems now that we know what our conversions are. Okay, so let's take a look at a few problems in tonight's homework. Problem numbers one through three all involved using the read, draw, and write process. So I'd like to work on problem number three. Problem number three, and here I'll put up our reminder for the read, draw, write process. Let's go ahead and read. Sean drank two liters of water today, which was 280 milliliters more than he drank yesterday. How much water did he drink yesterday? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can do a drawing. Let's see. Sean drank two liters of water today. Okay, so I'm going to say today Sean drank two liters, right? Two liters. You know what? Liters never shows up well unless you do it in cursive, so I'm going to do it cursive like that. Awesome. Let's see. Sean drank two liters of water today. Beautiful. I think that's well documented. That's 280 milliliters more than he drank yesterday. Oh, yesterday. So I'm going to do that with a Y. Yesterday he drank some amount, but it was less. How much less? Well, we know exactly how much less, right? It was 280 milliliters less than he drank yesterday. I'm going to draw a little dotted line. Okay. So we know how much he drank today. We know how much less he drank yesterday. And then the question is, how much water did he drink yesterday? Okay, so we have to do a subtraction problem, right? We knew we know how big the big box is. We know how much less the small box is. So if we do this minus this, we'll get this. But we've got a problem. We've got different units. 2 liters minus 280 milliliters. Well, we can't just subtract unlike units. The question isn't 2 minus 280, right? It's 2 liters minus 280 milliliters, different units. So we've got to figure out, let's see, how big is 2 liters? 2 liters. Oh, and we can look in our table. It's 1 liter. 1 liter is 1,000 milliliters. So 2 liters must be 2,000 milliliters. So 2,000 milliliters minus 280 milliliters That'll give us our answer, right? So we're going to rewrite 2 liters as 2,000 milliliters. And now we've got a simple subtraction problem. Let's go ahead and do that subtraction problem. We're going to look at each one of our place values, starting with our smallest one, to see if we have enough in the, menu, in the menu end to do our subtraction. So let's see. Can we do 0 minus 0? Yep, we can do that. Can we do 0 minus 8? Uh-oh, we can't. Let's see if we can decompose 100. No, we don't have any 100s to decompose. So we're going to have to go all the way out here and decompose 1,000 into 100s. Right, so that'll make 10 hundreds. Oh, and now we need to decompose one of those 100s into 10s. And now we've got enough units. So let's see, in the 10s place, we've got 10 minus 8. In the 100s place, we've got 9 minus 2. And in the 1,000s place, we just have that one left. So now we can do our subtraction. 0 minus 0 ones is 0. Uh, let's see, 10 minus 8 tens is 2 tens, 9 minus 2 hundreds is 7 hundreds, and 1 minus 0 thousands is 1, and that is in milliliters. So now we figured out how big this piece is. This is 1,720 milliliters. Let's see if that adds up in our heads, right? So Sean drank 2 liters of water today, which was 780, I'm sorry, 280 milliliters more than he drank yesterday. So if, if this answer is correct, if we had, if he had, if Sean had just drunk 280 milliliters more, it would be 2 full liters or 2,000 milliliters. Yep, that looks right. 1720 plus 280. Yep, that looks good. So I think we're done. Oh wait, we're not. We've got to write. Let's write. Uh, let's see. Um, Sean drank... 1,720 milliliters yesterday. Beautiful. Now we're done. Let's take a look at a few more problems here. Uh, let's take a look at 4A and 4B. These are, just like in yesterday's homework, we're going to complete the tables. And just like in yesterday's homework, I'm going to give you some help uh, along the way, but I'm not going to let you get started. So let's see, we have to figure out how many quarts are in a gallon, and then how many quarts are in two gallons and four gallons, etc. So I'm going to give you a clue here, which is that there are 16 quarts in four gallons. 
and that should help you out to make sure that you're on the right path as you start off your uh, tables and then as you finish your tables. Let's see. And over here in 4B, we've got to convert quartz into pints. And I don't, I'm not going to help you out to figure out how many pints are in one quart or how many pints are in two quarts or even how many pints are in six quarts. I'm going to wait till the very end and say, if you get to the very end and you have 16 quarts is the same as 32 pints, you are on the right track. Awesome. So that leaves the rest of 4A and 4B for you to do. Let's take a look at one more kind of problem. Let's take a look at problem number five. Let's look at the super detailed instructions. They are, read it with me, solve. Okay. Uh, let's see, we've got to solve. Let's, I'm going to take a look at, let's see, one problem on here for sure. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this. We've got five quarts, one pint, and we're asked to say, how many pints is that? So let's see, we could do, again, our little uh, tape diagrams of uh, quarts and pints. Let's see, how many pints are in each quart? Oh, that's two, two, two two, two, and then we had one there at the end, right? So that would be the same. If we express this all in pints. And at this point, I should be able to just add up my pints. I've got them all right here, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. There we go. Eleven pints. Awesome. And I'm not going to solve any of the other problems in five. I think there are these other three problems, plus I think there's a couple more E and F that I didn't that I cut off here. Um, that should give you enough uh, to go on to start working on your own problems. I wish you the best of luck on whichever ones were assigned by your teacher. And thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Take care.